Russia is getting a major facelift in the 1.35 update for EU4, and today we're going to be talking about it. The newest dev diary focusing on the upcoming update was released today, and it is focusing on the Russian nation with flavor for both Muscovy and Novgorod. New missions, of course, with flavor and mechanics to go along with it. Let's have a look. Welcome back, everybody, to another dev diary here, this time covering Russia in what many are calling the Majors update. You can see here that the last time Russia saw any big changes was Third Rome in 1.22, which is uh, a few years ago, to say the least. And they got a mission tree in 1.26, but the mission tree is, uh, it's not really a mission tree. And depending on how you form Russia, you get a different uh, looking mission tree, which is pretty cool. So this is the mission tree you get when you form as Muscovy, and this is the mission tree when you form as Novgorod. So it's pretty cool. It actually adds a little bit of replayability to Russia, where you can get two different mission trees by forming it with two different nations pretty sweet and it looks like upon opening up the russian mission tree you get an event that will allow you to basically get less permanent claims but cheaper core creation and fabrication costs so you can chain claims for the rest of the game which is quite powerful especially considering that you get a fabrication claim cost and ccr but you don't get permanent claim. That's an interesting concept. You also get a ton of claims, so you can kind of expand how you want to in the very beginning. And as you can see here, the 15% core creation cost is to offset the extra 15% you get for permanent claims versus regular claims, which a lot of people don't know about. And of course, the Grand Duchy of Finland may make an appearance if uh, you do so decide. Get them as a very strong vassal, and you will be able to get uh, this special type of cavalry, which is a Merc company from them. Pretty cool. And if you release Finland and you have the Lions of the North DLC, you will be able to uh, finish Finland's mission tree while the being your subject, which is uh, pretty interesting. And this tooltip is bugged. You actually get Corolian infantry. Very interestingly, it looks like you're going to be able to protect the South Slavs and unite the Slavs into one big culture group. That would be pretty nice, especially playing as Russia. Gives you a reason to head over here and conquer some land in the Balkans if you get them accepted for free at Empire rank. And pushing into the Caucasus gives you a ton of claims, while pushing past the Caspian enables you to uh, boost that economy. But if we have an ally out there, it looks like we can actually ask them to become our subject. And that's an interesting concept that might uh, give you a little bit of reason to maybe push out that way with friends. So this is a really interesting thing. Basically, whenever there is multiple rewards that are given in a mission, it will tell you which ones you fulfill and which ones you do not in the tooltip itself. So basically, if you fulfill these requirements, you will get this. If you fulfill these requirements, you get this. If you fulfill both of them, you get both rewards. So that's a pretty interesting way to do it. I think that's how Antebellum does it. I know I was talking to Parmaline and it, it had been brought up. So that is a really, really nice quality of life change. And it'd be nice if they went back and retconned some of the other mission trees to fix that as well. Some changes to trade nodes. It looks like a Rio Grande and Hudson Bay now flow into California, which will now flow into Girin over in China. So a little bit of trivia. A lot of people may not know this. The, uh, the Muscovites were actually kind of a tributary of sorts for the Great Horde around this time. Time. They're going to get a little bit of flavor around that, basically allowing them to give up their yearly tax. So they get a malice until they take Sarai, which is the capital of the Great Horde, uh, giving them basically minus two ducats per month. But they actually get extra income from vassals. So you may actually be able to just avoid it and play with vassals or push down into the south. And as long as a step horde owns Sarai, you will be paying that 24 ducats per year to that owner. Of course, you can uh, deny them your tribute, but it looks like they may retaliate against the people. They can either retaliate and deal with it militarily or you know they can basically take it on the chin and say all right maybe uh maybe we'll let it slide this time of course stabilizing the nation whenever the tatar yoke is removed and while the tatar yoke is an early game challenge it looks like there's going to be a muscovite civil war which will cause between a dispute for the throne between vasily ii and dmitry shamiaka or however that's pronounced rather than be a disaster it looks like it's going to be an event chain so that's pretty cool see a little bit of a typo here but it looks like vasily can get exiled he can raise up some pretender regiments or our current heir will die and dmitry will take over if you end up defeating them it looks like you will gain some stability and looking a bit more to the north it looks like the novgorodians are getting a couple of nobility changes and it looks like this one here is a uh, very punishing but uh, it's going to have to be dealt with but then if it's dealt with appropriately i assume novgorod will be getting some bonuses it appears that there's going to be a new modernization mechanic and it looks like the strelts are giving a bit more representation in the game turning them into a sort of janissaries of sort which is very interesting of course they will demand their salaries very similar to how the janissaries do it for the ottomans you can pay them and they'll get a little bit of a boost at the cost of some money or not and uh, they will get a malice and they may even get a little bit uh, pissy if you don't pay their bills and here is the modernization mechanic as with the decadence mechanic in the ottomans it looks like the russians are getting another unique mechanic for their government modernization appears to be sort of a westernization mechanic as it used to be are there any ogs watching right now who remember uh, westernization because that was cancer and i hated it i'm really glad that they got rid of that mechanic when they added the institutions regardless there are multiple ways of getting it whether you have high crown land embracing institutions and advisors outside of your culture group and if you are a great power 
with good modernization and you have defeated a rival and or humiliated them, you will be able to proclaim the emperor title and thus form the Russian empire and get the Russian Tsardom. You will still be able to claim entire states and you will enable the Russian rule ability. And these modifiers are really strong. I think this is actually different. National manpower, province war score cost, a free policy, which is really powerful and a ton of governing cap. Of course, if you do it as a republic, you will get some different bonuses. You will be able to do trade posts and trading cities and all that stuff. And plus two merchants along with the manpower and 50 absolutism is crazy. Of course, you will have the option to change your tech to Western tech as you become a modernized Western nation. Though it's noted here that only your tech group will get changed to Western, not your units. And the Russian rule ability here is yet another thing. Only this one is in the cultural menu. Looks like we have admin, diplo, and mill, each giving you a different bonus. This one gives dev cost and core creation cost. Diplo gives improved relations as well as diplo rep. And mill gives army tradition plus one and free harsh treatment cost, which is broken i imagine they're going to have to tweak a couple of these numbers because all three of these combined are incredibly powerful though i don't know how hard it will be to actually keep them all up all the way to 100 but that's a pretty pretty powerful modifiers right there once you form the russian empire you will get plenty of extra missions of course and completing certain missions will actually give you even more unique government reforms you can gain the parliament and at the cost of absolutism you can get a state loyalty equilibrium as well as a maximum privilege per state over here you can sell titles to a specific estate and seize land from a specific estate so that's an interesting mechanic as well as gaining some absolutism and removing influence from the estate so it looks Looks like selling of titles will then give an event rather than just sell 10% to everybody, as well as an event for seizing land you get to decide who you take it from. And depending on the reform that you chose prior, past the issues mission will give a different reward. You can get new parliamentary issues as well as stab costs and a state interaction cooldown modifier, which is an interesting one. Or you can just say screw it and revoke all of the privileges from estates for free and it doesn't matter, there's nothing they can do about it. And of course you have to finish it in the Age of Revolutions with a whopping 5% admin efficiency and revolutionary zeal maximum absolutism from the final mission. Of course, there's some beautiful flavor events with Ivan the Terrible, giving you Ivan Grozny here, who is a pretty solid leader. We can found Archangel, and it looks like it will be worth investing into it, and I'm pretty sure it's a trading center. I could be wrong, though. You can establish Rostov on Dawn, losing some money, but basically you get a ton of bonuses for it. And this, the last uh, Tisiatsky, or however this is pronounced, giving you yet another government reform with monthly autonomy change and minimum autonomy in territories. Boys, I'm excited to play Russia. And now we have the Alperchina, who was the government button where you could click to remove uh, unrest from provinces, I believe. And this modifier is going to give years of separatism, harsh treatment costs, rebel suppression efficiency, and all state's influence modifier this seems quite quite powerful and of course the ruski that most of us know peter the great the man in this picture himself good old piotr here the 666 becomes the heir at the age of 15 widely regarded as the man who kind of brought russia out of the dark ages so to speak definitely did a lot to invest into the economy the education system was widely reformed under peter and probably one of the funnier things he did was because he thought beards were barbaric he uh, actually instituted a beard tax to force every man to shave unless you know you could just afford to keep the drip of course the fate of the peasantry will be represented via a uh, event chain and you can enforce serfdom which will uh, cost you institution spread but will give you some bonuses to unrest manpower and war taxes you can further enforce serfdom which gives you some tech cost and some idea cost but it's still quite punishing on the institution spread but if you push it too much i think that uh, the people may rise up you're gonna get some peasants rising up and uh, discontent peasantry is going to hurt these provinces basically anything that is producing grain livestock or wool which is like half that region so yeah maybe you want to uh, abolish the serfdom if you have the option or not you can just uh force them down get that 100 war taxes cost extra manpower even more tech and idea cost you may have to kill a couple of peasants but that is a price that i would be willing to pay but of course all good things must come to an end and serfdom will be restricted which will uh cut back on the modifiers and lose some stability and of course you will have to abolish the serfdom in a revolutionary part of the mission tree. Next week, we are heading out to Western Europe. So who do you guys think it's gonna be? Probably France, if I had to guess. France got a mission tree and emperor, but uh, it's a big block and it's uh, it's not very good in my opinion. Though they could be bringing up Spain because I think we're gonna be seeing some Tercios in this update. So that's Russia. What do you guys think? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below. If you wanna see more dev diaries, make sure you subscribe to the channel and stay tuned because there's some fun stuff coming up. We're gonna be starting a new series here within the next week or two. And a huge shout out to the patrons who keep the channel going, get early access to videos and exclusive Discord benefits using the link in the description. I hope you have a wonderful day, and until next time, stay chill.